Hello, this is Lolly. So I saw Jennifer Maker had done a video where she showed doing making a subway tile, and it was a tile. This is a glass, but it's still considered a tile. And this is called an ice bevel tile. And she was showing how she did this with the knockout um, words across the uh, the back word. And so I started watching her video and I realized she's doing it in Cricut and there's no offset feature. And I really wanted to learn to do this in Cameo. So got this figured out and decided to share it with you. And stay tuned and I'll show you how it's done. Here we are in Silhouette Design Studio, and mine might look a little different than yours because I have the Business Edition. However, all of the functions I'm going to perform today will be available in the Basic Edition. The first thing I want to do is grab my drawing tool and select the rectangle, click and drag it, and I'm going to click the arrow just to stop making rectangles now. And I know that my tile is 11 and a half by 3 and a half inches, so I'm going to come to this transform panel on the right side, come up here and select this for scaling. I don't want to lock it because I, I don't want to save the proportions of this, so I'm going to change it to 11 and a half by 3 and a half and apply. And now I have a good representation of how large my surface is that I'm going to work in. Now I think it will make it easier if I come over here and fill it in with a light, very light gray just to uh, show, let's use this, to show my work area better. But I want to increase the transparency because I'm working on a glass tile, not really a gray tile. Okay, so now that I have that, I want to type in my first word, the very bold word in the background. And so I'm going to type in all caps like that. All right, so let's change the font. I want to use a very bold font. So I'm going to come down and so I have quite a few fonts here, but I'm going to select impact right there. Okay, now I, now I can make this bigger just by dragging. You see that blue line that occurs now and then like right there? I don't like that. So I'm going to come over here to my page setup, select this here for the grid settings, and disable smart snapping. It's a new feature I don't care for. Now, um, when you're looking at a font, I want to space these out a little bit. So I'm going to highlight it, right click, and ungroup. Now I'm going to move the Y out a little bit, highlight them again, come over here to the transform panel, and space them horizontally. Now it spaces them out evenly, but what it's looking at is this distance between letters. So here it's looking at the distance between this part of the L and that part of the Y, but the illusion is that they're too far apart, so I want to bring this back in a little bit. Now I'm going to highlight them and center them to the bottom, right click, actually. But what I still have right now is that each of these individual letters is basically just a line cut in the uh, Silhouette Design Studio. I want to turn it into this whole thing is a shape. So if I highlight the whole thing and right click and I say make compound path, now it's considering this as one shape. And I probably should, let's get out of here. I probably should go ahead at this point and fill it in. I'm going to fill it with black and I'm going to do the line in black as well. Okay, and now I can see how big I want that. And I'm not really looking at specific measurements. I'm just looking at how it fits on my tile here. And that's that's good enough. I think that's pretty bold right there. I could do it just a pinch bigger. Okay, and now what I want to do is create my what I'm going to use to knock out this, and that's my next word. And then off click so it gets out of there. Now I'm going to do this red. The line is already red. I'm going to fill it red because I really need to be able to see what's going on here. And I don't want this font. I want a long kind of scripty font that stretches out a little bit. And so I'm going to choose Dreamland Arrows. You see how spread out that is? 
but I also want to add the arrows on both sides. So this is in Silhouette Design Studio. I will give you the file name. But I want to add arrows and I want to make it a little bit longer. So I am on a Microsoft computer on Windows 10. So I'm going to type in in my bottom, that white search bar in the task bar, I'm going to type in character map and select it. When that comes up, it will have all of your fonts in here. And you just need to click this and find your font. It's already on Dreamland Arrows. So what I want is the back end of my arrow. I don't know what you call that. And I'm selecting one. Let's select this one. Select, copy. Now, I need to come back to Silhouette Design Studio. Click my word here and move my cursor right at the beginning. And if I do Control V, that will paste that in there. Okay, now if I do Alt Tab, that will bring me back to where I'm going here, working with this. And I want this, but use this dash. But I need to get rid of this characters to copy. I need to click that and backspace. Now I just want the dash. So click it, select, copy, and then come back to Silhouette Design Studio. My cursor's where I want it. Control V, that just adds a little dash in there. It makes it a little longer because I need that. I could have selected both of those at, together at first. So let me show you. Alt-Tab, I'm coming back here. So let me erase this and I'll show you what I mean. I can go and I can select the back of the arrow. Let's see, it would have been not quite that one. Which one was it? Let's say it was this one. I could select that and then I can select the dash and it would copy the two together. So that's one way to do it. Okay, now I don't know if I need both the dash and the front of the arrow for the front. So I'll select that and then I'll select this. And now I have those copy, come back to Silhouette Design Studio. My cursor is at the right, Control V, and it will add the dash and the arrowhead. Let's see if that works with what I want. That's about the right size maybe, although uh, as I'm spacing this, let's zoom in here. I'm looking at, because these this word here, Palooza, is going to knock out or cut out part of Lolly. So I'm looking at where my downstrokes and my upstrokes or my descending and ascending strokes are going to fit on Lolly. And I like it where it is now so that they're mostly over the bold parts. I don't want that Z like over here where it's white. I want them on the black parts. And when I do that, that looks pretty good. Then I'm looking at how much arrow is sticking out on both sides, and I think this is perfect. Now, I want to copy this. So when I highlight it, I'm just going to hit Alt and then drag, and it makes another copy and pulls it down below. And this is in case I make a mistake and just need to revert back quickly. So now what I'm going to do is create this as an offset. And this is what you don't have in Cricut Design Studio, uh, Cricut Design Space. So I'm going to come to this right panel here and you see this shape here with a little line around it. That's the offset panel. I'm, oops, I forgot to highlight this. Now I'm going to select offset and it chooses a line. Oops, I see a problem here. Do you see all the little uh, lines around in the middle? That is because, let me cancel this. That's because this is separate individual letters. I need to highlight the whole thing, right click, and weld it so it's one item. Now that it's highlighted, I can offset it. And I should have one smooth line all the way around it. That's the external offset, but I don't want it to be that big of a border, so I'm going to adjust this down to where I like the size. And I'm looking at my border to see what it looks like. And I think that looks good. So 0 0.075 or 0 0.08, one of those would be fine. Okay, so I'm going to say apply. And now I have this as a separate item. But what I want to do is fill this in so that I can see better what I'm working with. Fill it in. Okay, now I want to center this back up here where I want that knockout to cut. 
and you could even do it down lower, but I want it right about there. Okay, so now I'm going to highlight the whole thing. Come down here, right here, which is the Modify panel. Click that and just say Divide. Okay, now let's get rid of that. And now all I need to do is pull off all of these extra red pieces. This is the part that if I hadn't filled this offset in with the red, it would have been very difficult to see where I'm going with this. And I don't want to grab any of the black because you see what happens. You don't want that. So I'm going to hit uh, return there or refresh or redo. And one more. And now I can see what my knockout looks like by dragging this up. Beautiful. That is so smooth. But all these are in separate pieces. So I'm going to highlight that. Right click and group them together. That's highlight all of this and delete it. Okay, now I'm going to pull all of this off to the side. Let's see my entire workspace. And you can see what this looks like on a tile. Perfect. Now when I cut these, I need to separate these. So I can put a piece of vinyl up here and a piece of different color vinyl down here. and. I can send these, let's hit send, choose glossy vinyl in my materials right here. It says cardstock plain. I'm going to stick vinyl glossy right there. And I'm going to say cut. And now I have a beautiful cut line and I'm going to connect and to my cameo and I'm going to get these cut out. One thing I'm going to go back in design space and show you and I'm going to blow it up. You see this little tiny of black here? You can actually just cut that out by ungrouping and removing it if you don't want it. You can see when you do your vinyl and cut it, see if you like that in there or remove it. Little tiny pieces of vinyl like that really aren't necessary for your design. Okay, so let's get this cut. So the first thing I want to show you is these tiles. Now this is what I had picked up from Home Depot. I'm lining them up bottom and left and you could see how they are remarkably different sizes yet on the boxes and on the shelf they both say they are 4 by 12 but you will see that they are not. This one's closer to 11 and this one's closer to 13. This is a solid blue tile. They were out of white. Boy this is very dirty. This one is uh, it's called the ice bevel. You can see it even says there it's 4 by 12 by 8 millimeter. And this is just basically it's beveled glass that they have spray painted the back white and it gives it this beautiful look. So I'm going to wash this. I'm going to take uh, alcohol to it before I put any vinyl on it. Okay, I know we've got glare on this. So this is my tile and I'm going to uh, get some alcohol on that with a non linty cloth so that uh, I can make sure there's no fingerprints or smudges on it. And then I'll just set that aside and let that air dry. Now I printed these, I cut these out and they're in these two colors. Now they're brighter than my craft room colors, but I really like them, so I decided to go with it. <laughs> okay, so what I want to do, well, it's crooked, but it'll still work. Okay, now let's, oh, sorry for all that glare. We're going to take our transfer tape. See if I can get that lined up on the bottom there. Now, this is going to be really glary, so let me see if I can put this back, um, put something under here. 
to kind of balance this so it's not glaring at you. Very good. Now we want to get this. Hmm, not long enough, so let's get another piece. And when I'm centering this, I'm looking mostly on the lower and the downstrokes and upstrokes of these pieces. And then I'm pushing it down. There we go. Oh, perfect. So what I think I'm going to do is get one of those small paint easels and use that to uh, put this on display. I think this is so cute. Oh, goodness gracious. So I was really thrilled to be able to figure this out. I am loving it. I'm glad I didn't just use black and red. I think the colors really make this pop. So thank you for watching. Make sure you look at the links down below. And if you are on MeWe, I'm going to give you a link down below to Cameo uh, for Beginners in the MeWe social media platform.